Hello people, welcome back to another video, and oh boy, it's been a while. Uh, but today we're back in the wonderful world of Minecraft Triassic Park. In the last two episodes, we've been working on this amazing early Triassic South Africa kind of safari zone, if you will. And today we're back after like a month. Uh, sorry, I have a lot of school stuff to take care of to finally finish this area with the corner back there, which will be the apex predator. I took the time to complete the outside off camera just cause I didn't, like I felt like, um, you, you guys have seen that happen enough times. And before we can get the animals in, this is gonna be a pretty formulaic and simple straightforward episode, but that's good for me getting back. And we have some more interesting stuff down the line in the series, but we're gonna fill this all up on stream, probably do a time lapse so that this video isn't like five minutes long. But before we do that, I have some things to show you guys. All right, into the lab we go. You'll see we added some plot plants to the library, but that's not really the big thing because I now have for myself a lovely, lovely office. Step through here, you can sit in this chair and you can talk to me. I got this nice office here. Um, I, of course I will be standing right here, but never mind that. I think this is, this turned out very well. I have objects to represent me, amber for my allegiance to amber leaf. Maybe a piece of toilet paper, I don't know. Fern, fern, thought that was fitting. I like music, so here's my favorite Minecraft disc. No copyright strike. The best creature in the mod and the best prehistoric creature, a gyrocassus, beautiful. And then the skull of my favorite dinosaur, Pinacosaurus. Yeah, that's a nice piece, a nice piece of art, some books, you know, everything you might need. Through here we have my bedroom, which quite quite overgrown, but I do like it. Lovely velvet bed. And in there we have my pet shrimp. In this window you can look out into the beautiful landscapes. And through here there's just kind of a little connecting room, a little blood vessel room, you know. Got some fancy paintings on one wall, on the other a bunch of creatures. If you know what all these creatures have in common, by the way, comment down below. Uh, and another, another Pinacosaurus, the best dinosaur. And here we have a storage closet. So there's now actually a place to store things in this park. I still haven't really sorted through it, put anything in most of these chests, but it's nice to know that we have it when we need it. Okay, so we'll take the door back out, out into the office, and there's one other thing in this lab. Alright, this giant space that we keep digging out for stone and stonish materials. Yeah, well, IGN started using it. This area is still under construction, but this is going to be his office and kind of base in the Triassic Park. So that should be really cool when it's done too. Anyways, people, let's get that area of the South Africa Karoo Basin section uh, worked on. So, time lapse now. See you later. Alright people, so I hope you enjoyed that nice lengthy time lapse, because now we are awkwardly cutting in after like a week and a half of not recording, so that I can finish this video up real quickly. <laughs> Alright, so we go through here, and, uh, okay, so here's what we did during the very first episode. Last two episodes, we've been working on the South Africa Karoo Basin formation, and here we're going to finish it up, so let's grab these eggs.
All right, now, after weeks, technically like a month and a half, but didn't feel like that because it's not the actual amount of time we spent working on this, uh, we have finished the carry basin. And it's time to into this sparsely decorated because uh, I really want to be able to see the full might of these creatures. And now in this lightly decorated enclosure, we will place the eggs of our apex predators. Now we wait. All right, everybody. So now it's pitch black, and our lovely creatures have hatched. So let's um real quickly make it daytime, and then we'll come back and manage our friends here in a moment. I always forget how much this uh, shader pack messes up the graphics on my scooter. But... All right. So some of my Q viewers have probably uh, picked up on, and some of my knowledgeable viewers have probably realized. Uh, today, we are doing the Erythrosuchus. Alright, so once I find one of these, they're actually really small as babies, but I promise they are massive and amazing as adults. See, I can hear them, but tiny, right? Alright, so I'll go over what I have, and then we'll see what else there is. Oh, look, there are two of them right here. That looks so cool. Honestly, that might have to be the image for the episode. Anyways, the, these are Erythrosuchus. Erythrosuchus is, of course, Latin for a red crocodile. Not crocodiles, but they are archosauromorphs related. Uh, though they are not archosauroforms, like we will see many more of as we get through the Triassic period. These are Erythrosuchids, the Erythrosuchidae family. And these were honestly cut that. These were kind of the apex predators of the early Triassic, before the more developed um, kind of pseudosuchians came into prominence, these were populating Pangaea. This species is of course most well known from South Africa, which we are right now, and uh, these are known for their absolutely massive heads. Uh, Erythrosuchus, the head made up about one-fifth of the length of its body, but with some smaller species. There's one really tiny one that's like really cool. Not tiny, but like small compared to this. I don't remember the name of it, but it has a head that's a third of its body length, and that's amazing. Anyways, these were the largest predators of the time, and we talked about gates in the last episode. These would have walked with a semi-erect gait, which you can kind of see represented here. Alright, so those were the Erythrosuchus. Fascinating creatures. Be sure to leave your name suggestions in the comments down below. There are only three of them, keep that in mind, so make sure that they're really nice in quality. Although a lot of name suggestions is really nice, so yeah. Anyway, speaking of name suggestions, we're going to finish off this video by taking your name suggestions from last episode and naming all of the Cynognathus. Alright, so real quickly, I'm gonna think the dispenser is like right here. Maybe it's here? No, maybe it's here. No, oh, it's here. It's totally here. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. So we're just gonna take like some beef, you know? That way we can kind of find these. Because there are five in here. Alright, so there were a lot of name suggestions and not a lot of animals. So I just picked my five like favorites. So no hard feelings if yours didn't get picked. But there were these are some really good ones. And it was a mistake to make this enclosure so dense. There, we got our first one. You can be Crunch Munch, and... Okay, you're not stuck, you were just... Confused. It, it's fine. We... We all... Uh, have some trouble coordinating sometimes, come on. And here's our next one, you can be Parking Garage. So this one's suggested by IGN. Still on his business trip, but I guess still checking up on the park. There's another one. This whole area is super dense, so if they're all up here, we're gonna have trouble. This can be Vasker. This is a really cool name. Or Vaskur, I don't know. Cool name. Epic name. It sounds like some, like, Viking warrior or something. And we got another one, Saber. Uh, reminds you of a Gorgonopsid. We'll be getting to Gorgonopsids. Or not... No? We'll get, we'll get Gorgonopsid-like Dysinodonts a few episodes. Oh. Really? Really? Seriously? Ah! Okay. Okay, that's Crunch Munch. That just munched me. Okay, this is actually a really good way to find them. There's two over there. So that's Crunch Munch. That's Fast Girl, which also just invited me. Do you have a name? You don't have a name! Alright! Well, you can be Sir David Attenborough. That comment, by the way, also had two other great suggestions, which you might want to save for other animals. But David Attenborough is my favorite out of those three, so yeah. Once again, be sure to leave your name suggestions for the Erythrosuchus below. 
mobs everywhere. Okay. Alright, there, we got an Erythrosuchus, and it just ate me. Well, now that we got the... <laughs> now that we're in here, with the creature that we... Oh. You can grow them up. Well, everybody, now you can see how big these Erythrosuchus are when fully grown. They're big boyos. Apex predators, in fact. So, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed... Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment name suggestions, comment feedback, whatever you want. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Next time we'll be revamping the lab with all crazy new pieces of machinery. And getting uh, the start to our synapsid area of the Trask. So stay tuned for that. Goodbye.